What up people, welcome back to the channel for this week's video addressing an age old topic of wheel building. Now I know before we go any further that this is a well navigated topic on the internet and YouTube so there are loads of different videos out there but the only reason I really wanted to do this is because I've been thinking about it for a while and I learned to build wheels 15 years ago and I did it a little bit unorthodoxly if that's a word and basically what I'd show you that method because I found it really easy to learn and I'm not suggesting that a lot of people don't find the traditional method easy but for me this was a little bit easier and also some obviously tips and hints along the way about how I go about things so yeah we're going to cover the age-old topic of how to build a wheel the easy way. Firstly before we get into that shout out to uh, Isaac Lesser who came all the way up here back in April and we filmed episode two of the Foundation BMX podcast. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your messages. Um, and to anyone who hasn't watched the video, hit the link, which I'll put down below so that you can go and check that out on our YouTube channel right now or give it a listen if you're driving or whatever. Again, shout out to Isaac for coming up. He came all the way from Brighton to do it and I really, really appreciate that. So. On to today's topic of wheel building. First and foremost, a good friend of mine, Ollie Underwood, AKA Da Youth, hit me up about a month ago saying he'd had a bit of an accident at the trails, ended up his wheel, his front wheel was like pretty, pretty bent, messed up. We tried to rectify it, tried to fix it without replacing the rim, but basically in a nutshell, it was knackered. Um, one of them age old ones in trails where he did a table, got his handlebars caught in his shirt and couldn't get them out. And so ended up landing pretty flat with his wheel sideways, which is what's created the problem. Um, so yeah, basically shout out to the youth for hitting me up and saying, yo, can we switch this rim out? Which obviously naturally we're obliged. And so yeah, we'll go about it first of all, taking apart his old wheel, which is a Odyssey hazard light rim on a Profile Elite front hub. Oh, quickly, as a quick hint to anybody who finds themselves in this position in the future and you're not sure about wheel building or not confident enough to uh, take on the task of completely rebuilding the wheel, if you see on any wheel, front or rear, where the spokes cross, quick tip, if you actually just tape them with electrical tape together, before you start loosening off the nipples. When you've taken the whole wheel, um, or should I say, once you've loosened all the spokes off and removed the rim, you can actually um, just literally swap one rim for the other, i.e. the wheel will stay exactly as it's meant to be, as in where the spokes are all meant to be, and because they're taped together, you'll have the pairs that you'll see in a minute when we're doing the actual build on the wheel or what you need to get it in the rim right. So yeah, quick tip, which I've seen people do before and it is genuinely good advice, does work. If you actually just tape these parts of the wheel here where the spokes cross over, you can actually just loosen off the nipples, take the rim off, put a new rim on and everything should line up exactly where it should be. So just thought I'd give you that one because it is a pretty good one. Quick tip while we're taking apart this rim, if you get a spoke when you're trying to take the wheel apart that seems uncannily tight in comparison to the rest of the spokes, or nipples should I say, basically move on from it and just keep going round. The best solution for getting all those spokes loose the quickest is to actually take the tension off all of them before you try and remove them. The last thing you want to do is take one nipple all the way off then do the same with the next one and same with the next one because it just means they're really really tight like the first 25 percent will just take you forever whereas if you just loosen off the nipples like i don't know five six turns just to like get them loose then the rest will just start to come easy and once they're all loose you can just do them with your fingers dead quick so taking the wheel apart that's all now in bits so we're just left with the ingredients we need this hub just have a, hopefully we can get a, a bit of a close up. I 
don't know how old this hub is, but one thing that people always say about profile and obviously it relates to the price is that you know they just seem to last like if you're not running pegs one of these hubs especially a front hub god i, I know riders who've had these 15 years so they are really worth the money in that sense and also shout out to sam at profile europe for always getting the hook up on profile in the uk so nice one to him right so basically we now have our ingredients profile hub Odyssey hazard light rim and some BSD stainless spokes. So we'll now start putting it together and this is how I do it or how I learn to do it, should I say, which I think is a really easy method for people who want to build a wheel for the first time, how to do it. So let's get cracking with that. Also, another completely useful, <laughs> another completely useless but really interesting fact, Odyssey always puts a build date on their rims. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this. There's a sticker there which has got the build date of this rim, which is the 21st of October 22. Any Odyssey or G Sport rim, what I know when it was built, there's always a sticker on them. Right. So, for this method of building a wheel, you have to put all the spokes into the hub before you start lacing them to the rim. So, from now on, I'm going to refer to these spokes as the inbound spokes these first ones we're putting in we're pushing them into the hub that's why i'm calling them inbound and basically you want to start it doesn't matter where but just putting them in every other hole so basically go around the entire side of the hub putting one spoke in every other hole inbound and basically once we've got these spokes in here, we're going to now put the spokes on the other side while the hub's facing downwards like this in the same way. Now, how do we know where to start putting them in? Basically, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get one spoke. It doesn't matter which one, but you need to put that vertically down and you want to put the next inbound spoke as you're looking at it in the first hole to the right hand side and basically from there you can go around the entire hub again every other hole putting your inbound spokes in and basically we'll just rotate this hub around as we go like i say every other hole until we've got all those spokes which are downward facing from the way we're holding the hub as you can see all into the hub and then we can start filling in the gaps with the outbound spokes so basically there you can see it's all done all those spokes are all in and basically now all you need to do is go around filling in the gaps on both sides of the hub until you have all the spokes in the wheel or in the hub should i say so you've got all the spokes in ready to go. Once we're done, this is what you're left with. Now, it's really that simple to get the hub spoked up straight off the bat in one go. So now we've got all the spokes in the hub we've got this mess now this is fiddly this is probably the hardest part to get your head around with building a wheel using this method but bear with me because like i say i've done this a hundred times and you really just get used to it this is the way that now you know all the spokes are in the right place we just need to get them into the rim so how do we get them into the rim and how do we know we're in the right place well basically the first thing i would do is you need to get a pair of spokes in the wheel in the right place so you know where you are so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one up or outbound spoke and i'm going to find the next three or four inbound spokes to create my cross pattern now 
For those of you that have any experience with wheel building or who have maybe come across it in the past, you'll know that there are a few different methods for actually getting the spokes into the rim. Rather than say methods, should I say um, cross patterns that basically wheels can be built with. So the most common is three cross. Now, three cross basically in this instance just means that you go the third spoke across. So I've got my outbound and up spoke and then I just find the third one to the right of that that's inbound and then cross those over. That would be three cross. However, today we're going to be building this four cross because I couldn't get any polished spokes in a three cross length. You'll note when you go and buy spokes or you look on line to buy spokes, you'll notice most of them are 182, 184, 186. They're all for three cross patterns basically. And anything that's 19 something like 192, 194, 196, they're all for a four cross build pattern. But yeah, basically I've got my outbound spoke here. So I'm gonna count four to the right on the inbound spokes and I'm gonna cross those over. So I've got one, two, three, four. And if I cross those over, like so, basically those are going to be my first two spokes that I put into my rim. And something that's really important about this is that your outbound spoke goes underneath your inbound spoke. And this creates like a tension. And that tension obviously helps your wheel be stronger. So it's really important that your outbound spoke goes underneath your inbound spoke okay once you start this you have to do that on both sides of your wheel you cannot change which way you do it and what i mean by that is i'm going inbound uh, sorry outbound under inbound and because I'm doing that, I'm now setting that precedent for the entire wheel build. You cannot do this the opposite way around on your other side of the wheel. It will not work. But basically, let's get these two spokes into the rim and that'll give us a bit of a better idea of what it is we're trying to do here. Rim here, where do these two spokes go? The best place to start to make sure your wheel is built right is the first two holes on the side of the rim you're putting them in to the left of the valve hole so basically where your valve hole is it will be the first hole to the left and then miss one the next hole which on these has as a odyssey hazard light rims they're kind of spaced out so you can see which side's meant to go where however if they were all in a straight line it would be the first one to the left of the valve hole miss one then the next one okay so let's try and get those in there. Something really important to note at this point is now I've just screwed the two nipples onto the top of these spokes is they need to be tightened all the way down until you can just see the last thread on the spoke. Why is this important? Well, it's important because basically what we want to do is get all the nipples all tight to the same place before we start truing the wheel. And the, the only way we're going to know that is by having a baseline. And the baseline for me is the last thread on the spoke itself, tighten up the nipple all the way down until you can just see the last one. And then if we do that the entire way around the wheel, we know that the wheel nipples will all be in the same place. And because the spokes are all the same length, effectively, we know where we're starting from. So basically after this, we're gonna go around and we're just gonna pick a couple more spokes. And the easy way to do this from now on, once you've got your first two in, is you just work your way to the left. So basically, if you go to the outbound spoke to the left of the one you've just put, put in, and the inbound spoke to the left-hand side of the one you've just put in, cross them over,
put them into your rim and tighten down your nipples. Again, all the way to the last thread. This process we've now started is just going to be repeated the entire way around the rim. So I'll put some videos up trying to show you a little bit better what it is I'm trying to say about the cross pattern. Um, but yeah, basically if you continue now just putting in the next outbound to the left and inbound to the left of the ones you've just put in, basically you can work around the entire side of the rim putting in all the spokes all at the same time. got all the spokes on this side of the wheel in situ now and literally they're all where they should be and we just need to fill in the gaps on the other side now to make the wheel complete. Like I said this way of building a wheel for me it kind of just gives you a bit more of a clearer idea of in my opinion an easier way of putting the spokes into the rim. Once you've got your head around building wheels, it is very straightforward, no matter which method you use. However, it's just for me, I found this way easier because I was putting them into the rim in pairs and that just seemed to be easier for my brain to digest, if you like. So now we've done all the spokes on this side, like I say, we'll flip it and we'll do them on the other. Now, when it comes to doing the spokes on the other side, again, you need to start with a outbound spoke and you need to find either the third inbound to the right or the fourth in our case because we're doing four cross and once you've found the spokes you think right the best thing to do is cross them over in your hands move them about a bit see where they become level with the rim and you'll look and there is two holes waiting for those spokes literally so that's why I find this method easy again, like I say, because it's kind of pretty self-intuitive. Once you've got the one side in, the second side's a walk in the park. So basically, we're going to go around now and we're going to put all these spokes on this side in. Again, starting with these two, once these two are in and you can see they're right just by looking at them, is just take the next outbound to the left and the next inbound to the left, cross them over again really important outbound needs to go under the inbound to create a tension and you'll feel the tension in your fingers when you do it it just it puts like a, a pressure against the spokes to give them some strength so let's go around flip this round get this all in so we can finish off so like i've just said this is the stage we were just at where we would got the one side in and we just need to start doing the other side now so first and foremost the first thing I do is I select the outbound spoke that I'm going to start with and then I count from that one four across because this wheel is four across however it would be three if your wheel was three cross and like I say once you've found the two spokes that you need you need to cross them over remembering to put your outbound underneath your inbound to create that tension and literally offer them up to the rim and you'll see straight away that it's pretty obvious where's right because if you were to do it the wrong one hole to the left or right they just don't look right and again that's why i like this method because it's just pretty intuitive to the eye that you can see where those spokes need to go in the rim obviously once you've found the right place you want to screw your nipples on making sure that you take them all the way down to the last thread and I actually use my thumbnail for this just to make sure I'm as far as I can be to the last thread and from there you can simply start working to the left or the right depending on which way you prefer and selecting the next spoke either to the left or the right as an outbound and then the next one to the left or the right depending on which way you've gone 
you can get the next two spokes, cross them over, and by the time you offer them up to the rim, again, it should be pretty straightforward which the two holes you need to put them in. So here we have it, the finished product. I hope that video kind of explains well enough how I've just done what I've done. I've been, whilst making the video, really paranoid that it is not the most easiest thing to film or explain. However, I found this way of building a wheel the easiest way to learn how it works because basically it isn't that difficult and in today's modern riding where most people ride brakeless building your own wheels isn't actually a difficult thing in the sense that it doesn't matter a load if it's not 110 percent true which by the way consequently truing will cover in the next video but yeah it just means that you can put your own wheels together if you really want a custom wheel and you really want to get it quickly then shops and online stores can ship you the parts same day and that just is going to mean you'll get the parts the next day and if you're confident enough to give this a go then you'll have your whole setup done and dusted really quickly um what i would suggest though before you start running out and ordering the parts to build yourself a wheel perhaps though is to try it with an older wheel if you've got a wheel that you don't use no more that's in fairly good shape it doesn't have to be amazing but maybe take it apart try it put together again using this method see if it works you know and by all means i'm not trying to say that this is the definitive way to build a bmx wheel no it isn't however this is the way i learned it and i learned it like this as i've already mentioned because i found it easier to to digest all the bits and pieces that are going on whilst you're building one but yeah give it a go see what you think let me know in the comments if you've seen this method before let me know if you use the traditional method let me know if you're confident building wheels here's up in the comments let us know how you do it as always thanks for watching and yeah we'll speak to you in the next one